Hear me, Doctor Strange. God is a magician. Reality is trick. And it is all done with mirrors. The universe becomes glass around you. Light and heat and white infinity. A chorus of voices thunders in your mind. Your consciousness splinters. Your soul cracks. There is a fullness. Then a void. And from the void, a world. Shamala. Think. It is called Delay System. A series of invisible grids that crisscross the globe, connecting primal power spots. Earthly centers of divine energy. Think. The ancient priests and sorcerers using geomancy, the study of the lay system, built their temples and burial grounds, observatories and worship places upon these power spots. Think. The flow of energy through the ley lines has always reflected and fed man's inner state. Now, so the Chambelese lords say, those energies are sluggish, nearly dormant. A cosmic artery clogged by centuries of spiritual decay. Think, that artery must be repaired. The blood of the earth must flow freely. Only when the power spots interconnect and merge, as they did in ancient times, can man evolve to the next level of consciousness. Here, in the jungles of Yucatan, where Cortez trampled the Aztecs, and Quetzalcoatl's power still permeates the land, the surgery begins. Ah, but the great surgeon is no longer saving lives. Now, he is saving souls. And to do it, he must obliterate three quarters of the world. This thought is too much for you, Stephen. And you push it away, concentrating on the here and now. On the eye of Agamotto, as it pierces the jungle gloom. Revealing a hidden... A pyramid buried here for centuries. Decomposed corpse of a dead civilization. And though the surgeon may view death as an irrevocable end, the savior sees with other eyes. A careful gesture, a whisper incantation, and dead truth rises from the jungle floor. But like every truth, this one is many-sided. A pyramid above and below. Within lies the first fragment of a spell old as creation. A spell that, once all three fragments have been reactivated, will set the lay energies free, bringing forth Armageddon and Apotheosis. Armageddon, the enormity of what you have been asked to do, the simple human horror of it, fills you with renewed apprehension, and you struggle to contain it. I felt the Ancient One's presence among the Shambhali's lords, you remind yourself. I know he would never lead me onto the wrong path. And yet... You recall the many times the Master told you that birth and death Joy and suffering, all the world is just a dream. The play of Maya, queen of illusion. It is the undying reality behind illusion, he said. That sustains us, unites us, lifts us out of Maya's clutches. And yet, as if in response to your own doubts, shapes, Emerge from shadow, snake forward, ensnare you. Minds guided by some unseen hand, by an enemy who wishes to prevent your entry into the pyramid and force your early surrender. 
But you are Doctor Strange, and you will never surrender. A minor bit of sorcery, and divine's receipt. A doorway at the base of the pyramid slides open in response. And you wonder, perhaps this wasn't an attack, but a test, designed ages ago by the pyramid's architects. A guarantee that only the worthy should enter and bathe in the light of ancient days. The spell fragment floats there on the air, waiting for your touch. Floats as it supposedly floated for 12,000 years since Atlantis and Mu were washed away, the last golden age drowning with them. Survivors from Mu's lost continents are said to have spread out across the earth, a colony of Atlanteans settling here, where they built these pyramids. These temples, these road signs, to perfection. Concentrate on ether, air, and form, on transmutation of energy. Conjure two pallets of mystic force, two spheres that will merge with the fragment. Add to it, revive it. Now! <laughs> the spell responds, awakens, reforms. But something is wrong. Time is wrong. The wall between what was and what is has dissolved. You stand simultaneously within the temple and in ancient Atlantis on that long ago day of catastrophe. The end of an age is no longer a vague intellectual notion, but a fact. You hear the shrieks of torment, feel the agony and desperation of fate's victims, and doubt. That scaled, fish-eyed thing swims again to the surface of your mind, grips you, drags you down. You are drowning in time and doubt, Stephen. You are dying. No! No! This world is illusion! Time is illusion! The illusion can be transcended! So, time's tidal wave ebbs. So the first spell fragment is restored. You are triumphant. You are proud. But your pride is a blindfold. It blocks your view as you stagger on toward the edge of a great abyss. Southern India. Here in this Hindu temple, 15 miles outside Bangalore, the second of the three spell fragments rests, left, so the lords of Shambhala say, by the survivors of Mu, the fathers of Vedic wisdom. You are certain now that what happened in Yucatan was part of a concerted attack. The work of someone, perhaps a group, attempting to thwart the Lords and prevent man's evolutionary leap. Whoever they are, you reflect, I beat them easily enough. They'll think twice before trying again. So you forget them and focus on the task at hand. Discovering that it is difficult to focus, when surrounded by such rare and delicate beauty. In the West, a thing often flaunted, marketed like some cheap perfume. Beauty. Ah, but in the East it hides, diffident behind the veil, waiting for the song of Krishna's flute, waiting for the call to awaken. Ah, you study them as they encircle you dancing and delighting. And although you sense that your unseen opponent is behind this miraculous transformation, you feel no fear. No. All you feel is a sudden rising. Lust. 
years of discipline and austerity drop away. The shadow of a man you once were enfolds itself about you. You are no longer Doctor Strange, the dispassionate mystic. You are Doctor Strange, the vain and egotistical. Years of discipline and austerity drop away. The shadow of a man you once were enfolds itself about you. You are no longer Doctor Strange, the dispassionate mystic. You are Doctor Strange, the vain and egotistical. The arrogant surgeon who sees beauty and wishes only to possess it. Words spoken long ago echo in your mind. A man like me, you once boasted, can never be satisfied with one woman. I swear to you, even if I could divide myself into a hundred men, I'd still be hungry for more. The time has come to test that boast, Stephen. A centuries-old spell of separation is invoked, and dozens of Doctor Stranges fall into dozens of eager arms. You are sightless now, unable to appreciate their beauty, struck blind by the light of your own consuming passion. You give yourself over to that light, wanting nothing more than to drift here, empty-headed, empty soul for an eternity, lost in the pleasures of the flesh. Light becomes silence, becomes void. Then, from the void, a presence. Then, from the presence, a voice. Remember, the voice whispers, soft as a wind chime. Remember, it repeats. Your own voice thunders in response. Go away! Leave me alone! Let me be! Awake, awake. The voice insists. The spell must be completed. Master? You speak his name, and you are free. And being free, you wonder. Am I too late? No! This world is illusion. Lust is illusion. The illusion can be transcended! Words of confidence and power. <laughs> Lies, Stephen. Even as the second spell fragment is revealed to you, even as living passion reverts again to stone, you realize that there has been no clear victory here. For you know how close you came to utter failure. So weave your necromantic tapestry, Sorcerer Supreme. Restore the ancient fragments to full power, but be sure to check the tremble in those nimble surgeon's hands. Be sure to remember. Great Britain, you thought coming here by boat would give you time to catch your breath, restore your balance. But the strain you have felt since leaving India has only increased. Why? Is it because you underestimated your hidden enemy? Because you overestimated yourself? Or is it something more? Since your pilgrimage to the Ancient One's temple, you have been aware of a presence. His presence, of that you are certain. On the periphery of your consciousness. Gently guiding your hand. But in Bangalore, that presence reached inside you. Dragged you, kicking and screaming from passion's embrace. Left alone, you would have failed. It was the presence, to grudgingly admit, that won the day. The inevitable thought forms. Perhaps it's been the presence molding my life, my choices, all these years. I've fancied myself a great master. Could it be I've been an even greater pawn? Pondering that, you walk on through Lincolnshire. 
On a nearby hill, a pagan temple once stood. Now, Dorrington Abbey looms above the town. I'm worn and weary, watching your advance through hollow eyes. Here, where the ghosts of Atlantis and Mu hover beside the ghosts of druid priests, the ley lines intersect. Here, where the worshippers of a crucified lamb unknowingly maintain the power of this sacred spot, the final spell fragment awaits. Here, the maze beckons. It surrounds the abbey on all sides, an intricate spiral of hedges, stones, and trees, leading to the site of power, the Omphalos, where the final fragment rests. You enter cautiously, warily, understanding that the greatest challenge of all, the greatest danger, awaits within. Yet as you step forward, you feel your concentration breaking. Your thoughts grow muddled. You look around you and suddenly realize that you are hopelessly lost. You wonder, a sleepwalker. You wonder, a fool. Each turn, the wrong turn. Each step, the wrong step. And then you spy the glass and the shadows deep within it. Ten thousand horrible demons, your every base desire, reaching out to you. The maze is gone. You find yourself standing within the abbey, face to face with your long hidden form. You gaze upon her, unsurprised. Why didn't I see it before? You wonder. And speak her name. Maya. Maya. <laughs> <laughs>